Hello, my name is Vesa Jubonen. I work as a senior program manager in Office 365 product crew. And in this particular video, we're going to concentrate on how to enable app-based provisioning of site collections uh, within the Office 365 dedicated or within the on-premises using the new capabilities which were released as part of the April CU uh, in 2014. The April CU has been installed at Office 365 dedicated farms, and after that we're able to use the client-side object model to remotely provision site collections uh, within the dedicated or in the on-premises environment after the April CU as well. Uh, we kind of used an example, or you're able to download the example uh, in two different locations. So we do have two adaptations of this code. The first adaptation uh, is the official CodePlex, uh, sorry, Code uh, Gallery adaptation, which is in this, uh, which is this uh, example what you're seeing in the video. Uh, you're able to go to the code.msdn.com.microsoft.com and search uh, this uh, title and you're able to download the needed code for that. For the video, I'm going to actually use a slightly different adaptation of the code. So I'm going to use something which we have in our patterns and practices guidance, uh, where that original sample actually for the code, play, uh, code uh, project, uh, code gallery also came from. So uh, underneath the Office Dev in the GitHub, uh, this is the official GitHub project uh, for the Office uh, 365 or Office development uh, hosted by the Office uh, product group. We have the BNP project, Patterns and Practices project. And underneath here, if you go to samples, we're able to see a massive list of individual samples, how to do functionalities and required, required actions using the app model. Uh, one of the examples in here is the uh, provisioning.onprem.async. Uh, and this is essentially the exact same example what we have in the MSDM code gallery, uh, but this has been slightly enhanced to apply a custom branding, a nicely looking custom branding uh, to the newly created site collection. Just to demonstrate how the, the branding uh, is, for example, applied uh, to the site collections when we use the site uh, season based provisioning. So you can use either one of these code bases, uh, just go to the internet and download uh, the code and start using that as your starting point uh, for your production or development activities. Let's move into the code side. So what we have uh, in this particular example is a two part code. The one part is actually the provider hosted application. Uh, and essentially this is a pretty typical provider hosted application. It has obviously the app project uh, and then it has the provider hosted application project sign. So this is the one which is, will be hosted within a separate uh, IIS servers within your on-premises uh, with the dedicated deployment. Um, or if you're using, using an on-prem, complete on-prem deployment, this, the exact same thing. You would be hosting this application in the provider hosted platform, which is your on-premises IIS uh, server, which could be load balanced and so on and all of that. All of that detail we have pretty nicely covered in MSDN guidance. So let's, let's concentrate on the actual code, what this particular project is doing. So this is the part which is actually taking care of the end user request on creating that site collection. And the reason why the project name is async, uh, it refers to the asynchronous way of creating the site collection. From an end user perspective, it's not actually that well, the site collection creation takes a while. So from an end user perspective, we really don't want to wait uh, the, the whole time as the browser is, is let's say, showing a GIF animation while the site collection gets actually created. So what we want to do is rather is to create, use an asynchronous approach where the request is stored and then we have a remote time show which goes and actually provisions the site collection and sends the email for the requester or sends the email to whatever person we want to notify uh, related on the created site collection. So let's create a, a team site uh, and give it a name. Let's call this uh, SPO uh, demo. And let's use the URL as the demo uh, dev.contoso.com slash site slash SPO demo. I'm going to give a, a domain account which is the administrator. So this is going to be added as the administrator uh, for the account. Uh, and then I can give an email, uh, additional email to notify whenever the site collection is created. That could be the administrator email or that could be a group of people like site admins.contoso.com. So the code could actually then uh, send an email uh, for the group of people. And I could give it a description uh, description entry uh, 
uh, for the site. So when you think of it, this is just an initial, let's say, simplified form. Just as well, we could ask, ask something like additional metadata for the created site collection and then store that metadata either within the site collection or a separate list um, for a tracking purposes. Or we could ask whatever additional capabilities what we want. We could also provide multiple different adaptations of the, of the theme site, uh, which is then taken into account during the provisioning. So this is more or less kind of a, just a high level of simplified uh, UI. Uh, you can modify that any way you want uh, within your provider hosted app. When I click the create, uh, this request will get actually stored. So it will actually get stored uh, as a site request uh, on the host web where this uh, application is, is hosted. And again, you might can change that if you want, uh, but it's, it, it's just a simple demo how, how we're actually proceeding with this. Uh, in the UI, we're saying that the request has been recorded with the title of SPO demo and the URL and the email to notify the site collection administration. We will notify the provider email when the site's request has been proceeded. Pretty typical process uh, what we used to also have in the Fortress code. If you go to back on the site, so this is the host where I deployed the site. Um, and if you go to the site request, we're actually able to see uh, the request which we just created. So this is the, the asynchronous part. Now the request has been stored and we're able to see that the status of the request is requested. Um, and it has all the needed information what we need to do for the provisioning of the site. Uh, then the following part. Uh, continue. So then we need to have that remote timer job. Well, we can do timer jobs in the in the SharePoint uh, online or the using the app model. So therefore, we do a remote timer job. Remote timer job is a, a code which is running outside of the SharePoint, which is then the in any way being scheduled, either using, for example, Windows Azure worker process scheduling, or just as well, it could be scheduled as a console application and using Windows scheduler. And in this particular case, the code has been placed uh, to a console application. So this is a, a really simple console application, which is taking care of then the actual provisioning part. Uh, this could be scheduled to be running, for example, as a Windows scheduler entry in multiple servers. So it would have a, a high available load for processing uh, those requests. Uh, let's actually start the code uh, and have a look what's happening uh, and then let's have a look on, on what we actually get as an end result. So what the code is actually doing, it is accessing uh, the list which, which has those requests. It's using the configuration file of this console application to figure out where the list is located. It takes the connection there. It checks uh, those items which are with the status of requested. So those which haven't been yet proce uh, processed. And it loads those items from the list and it starts proceeding, proceeding uh, and processing those items one by one. Um, what we also do here is that we are updating the item to be then in the provisioning mode. And this is giving us the capability of having multiple servers hosting this console application. Because right now, if there would be another server where the console application is scheduled, uh, we're able to see from the list entry that actually the, uh, the status has been changed, so therefore none of the other servers would actually take that request into account anymore, because this server actually already took it in the execution. Moving back on the code, uh, what we're doing is that we start proceeding uh, pr processing uh, that request, and we're using a pretty normal uh, client-side uh, site collection creation code, uh, which is which is part of that uh, 15 version of the tenant uh, assemblies. If you download the code from the Patterns and Practices project, uh, you will actually get those all of the DLLs and needed assemblies with you. So you don't need to worry about where can you actually get access on the, on the needed uh, and used assemblies. Um, so what we're doing is that we're essentially saying that uh, to to the URL uh, devcontoso.com slash site slash SPO demo, we are creating a, a new entry based on that information, what we actually had on the list item within the list. Uh, the following step will take a while, so I will actually cut the wait time away from the video, uh, so we will can continue on setting the branding correctly on the just created site.
No, no, the processing has been done. The site collection has been created uh, successfully with the URL, uh, and we're able to proceed of modifying that site collection. So it, right now, it's an out-of-the-box theme site. But we probably want to actually have some customizations like branding applied to that theme site, uh, which or let's say additional document libraries, content type site columns, and so on. So what we're doing within the code is that we're taking a, a alternative, uh, we'll continue by taking an instance or connection uh, to that just newly created site collection or the root side of the site collection. And then what we're doing is that we're deploying a theme to that site collection, which is essentially having the needed branding uh, for this particular imaginary customer. I'm using just the garage theme because it's, it's a pretty nice looking theme uh, to demonstrate the capability. Um, then what we're also doing is, that, well, that was the deployment of the theme to the site collection. So we're uploading the needed files uh, to the site collection. And then the following step is actually applying the theme uh, to that particular site. I'm not going to walk through that code. You can go and, and uh, more detailed walk through the code uh, within the examples if needed. That's going to now set the uh, garage theme to the site, and then the following step is actually add a logo uh, to the site. So we're able to add the logo to the site to use the company logo. In this case, it's going to be the garage logo to the site. So let's actually do that as well. Uh, or we upload the logo first to the site, and then we set the logo for the site. And let's update that and execute the content. And at this point, uh, we are already kind of done. So we, we can actually take the URL of the web URL. I can just quickly copy that uh, just to show what we actually got. So I'm connecting to that newly created site collection, which the remote timer job has now created or created already. So let's actually open up the, uh, the connection there. And let's go there with the browser request. And we're able to see a newly created uh, theme site collection, which has a custom branding applied based on the requirements. Uh, it also has the custom logo on top of, on the top left corner. Um, just as well, this could we could in, uh, add also content types and site columns and and whatever libraries and whatever customization is needed, uh, or modify the layout of the page, um, using the CSM techniques using the remote time job. The one thing about I wanted to still quickly cover uh, or point is that whenever you actually start uh, doing this development in the on-premises, you probably want to enable these capabilities within the on-premises as well. Uh, and that's when you want to go to the, uh, this blog post, uh, which is underneath uh, the blogs.msdn.com slash vesco. Uh, which is explaining the detailed steps, uh, how, how to enable these capabilities uh, underneath uh, within your on-premises environment. We will obviously get this guidance to the MSDN uh, at some point, but right now uh, this is slightly, uh, well, this is, this is already available for you to go through and to follow up on, on the required steps uh, to enable the site collection creation in the on-premises as well which probably is something what you want to do, uh, even though you would be using Office 365 dedicated. So for your development environments, uh, your maybe testing environments before you move the code to the Office 365 dedicated environment, these are the steps how to ena enable uh, the site collection creation within those environments uh, for your code. Thanks for your time, uh, and hopefully uh, you find the video and the examples which we're providing useful for your business.